wrong look on his face, but in the same time telling me I looked great. I looked beautiful, like you're gonna be fine. And then it just like- Okay, coronavirus. This is part two. Yeah, this is part two to that. What is it? Cap cappuccino? Ross. Cappuccino? Cappuccino. So- Ross Cappuccino. Yeah. So obviously y'all saw, if y'all didn't see the part one, um, I'll link that down below. Um, but there's more to the story and I've heard, I've watched like that music, or I've seen the music video and then I've watched this interview part and there's so much more to it from his perspective and like, so let's just watch it. I cried. She did cry, you could see it in the last one. I'll, I'll roll the clip. As much as possible, there's no time. Find some help and try to yell, you ain't too well, oh God. I had a tear. I had a couple tears. And that not actually dripped down on this side, but I had a lot of tears drip down on this side, so. You leaning? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay, let's watch this one. Right, my name is Ross Capicchioni. Oh, Capicchioni? Wow, the whole time. See, maybe this, oh, the CH in Italian is not CH, it's Kio. Yeah, Ki we're American. Ross Capicchioni? Capicchioni? Michigan, suburb outside of Detroit. Wait, so he lived? Oh, it happened? Well, it happened like I was a junior in high school. You didn't know that? See, that's see that's why that shit... Yeah. Yeah. You know, 17-year-old punk shit. Just doing my thing, skating, hanging out. What I mean is basically there's no... This kid, supposedly was mostly my friend, and I knew this kid for, uh... 10 years prior before this day, he asked me, hey, can you give me a ride to my cousin's house, you know, down in the D. All right, yeah, well, like, what part? Like, the west side or the east side? And he's like, okay, so, he said he knew this kid for 10 years. The song's a little different, to like, I guess, probably to make it, like, a song. You know, mm -hmm. like, movies, like, kind of spin shit up. Mm -hmm. But, it's based on a true story. Or also, they could have, like, no, like, no, like, you know those kids that you've gone to school with since you were, oh, well, you I don't. <laughs> Sorry, she's a military kid. I'm not. I went to the same school K through eight, and then I went to high school in the same town. So, I mean, I have a lot. Like, there's a lot of people that like I've known since I was in kindergarten, but like I don't. Like, I never like was like friends with them until right. I got like, older. Like you know, like you see their yeah. face, and you're like, oh, I went to. Like school I literally now. have people now. Like I'm out of high school. I'm in college. I'm in my third year of college, and like I have people now that like I knew in middle school that like we like reconnect, and they're like mm -hmm. like now we're like friends, but we were never friends in middle school. Like, yeah. Like, oh shit, sorry. That's that's all I'm talking about. Yeah, I think you knocked my elbow. Sorry. <laughs> Nah, man, I don't got no business on the east side, you know? He's like, no, nah, it's cool, man. Like, the east side, that's like seven mile, like, it's just, it's like a third world country. The police, they won't stop and get out the car. They won't pull you over. If there's gunshots, they'll wait till everything's clear and they'll come pick your body up off the street and that's it. He's like, please, man, please. I'm like, no. So, like, a week goes by, you know, I'm still telling him no, like, because I had a feeling, like, don't go down there kept asking me, I'll give you 30 bucks for gas, all this shit. I'm like, all right, whatever, you know, you're my friend. I'll take you down there. He said he had a gut feeling though. He said, I have a gut feeling. I'm, I'm not going down there. No way, Jose Cuervo. I feel like even now listening to this, like even listening to like him talk, cause I honest, like honestly, I had no idea that he lived. I had, I had no clue. Yeah, that's why you're like, yeah. you live? Even, Even listening to this part, like, it hits me, like, okay, we, died, didn't, we didn't talk about anything in the last video because I was fucking crying, whatever, yeah, like, the last one was just straight, the, the part where I really God. started, like, getting teary-eyed was when it, I don't know if I want to talk about this on camera, um, we can talk about it later, actually, we can talk about it later, um, but, uh, one thing that, like, gets me is that, like, I'm the person that drives everywhere. Like, out of all my friends, I always drive. I, I'm always, I just, because I don't like being the passenger in a car. So, Joe, on the, yeah. I always drive. I hate being the passenger in a car. I really don't like being passenger in a car. I always drive. My friends always ask me to drive them anywhere, and I always, like, you can ask any single one of my friends. They text me and ask me to drive you somewhere, and I'll, I always say yes. I never even ask for gas money, like, yeah. I just, I just, I just always drive. Like, I don't even like, I hate driving. I hate physically driving, but I just don't like being the passenger in the car. Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
my best, my, my other best friend other than her, or one of my other best friends, has epilepsy. She can't drive, so I drive her everywhere. I dri Like, I just drive Brooke. everybody. Hey, shout out, Brooke. Brooke Ashley, I love you. Fuck you, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay, let's go. Anyways! <laughs> anyways! I go to school that day, and I get out, and everything seems normal. We go to the gas station, he gives me the money for gas, we drive down there. So I get off, and it's just like, I get that eerie feeling like you're in a bad spot. Um, what I was gonna say is, um, he felt eerie. That's premonitions, dude. You know when shit's gonna go down. You, you know. I hate bringing it up, but you know. You know. But it's like broad daylight out, a beautiful day you like know. today. Yeah. I hate and bringing we're driving, and he's yeah, telling me where to go, go, and we pull out in the street, and you know, there's people outside, and he's like, all right, that's the house right there. So he's like, you know, pull around back in the back. Like when I turned the corner to go right, like I seen it, it was like a caution by do not enter and all this shit, but I still, you know, because I, I knew him for so long, I just thought, you know, it's the D, it's, you know, whatever. See, God, we're not even gonna, we're only a minute, two minutes in, but he said, I've known him for so long, that's not, human, humans trust humans if you've known them for so long, like, you think that, like, they're a friend, but you never know what the other person, like, has went through in the past, okay, like, for example, he said that he's known him for ten years, mm -hmm. he had no idea that he was about to be initiated into a gang for doing this shit, he had no idea, he just thought, like, oh, I know this dude, he wouldn't yeah. do anything to me. Mm -hmm. There was a fence, like a grass area, my my vehicle, and then houses right there. So it was like, nah, I wasn't in the middle of nowhere or anything. And like, I get out, and he gets out, and like, it's only a couple seconds, I'm looking around. And my ears are ringing, I'm like, man, that was close. And I kind of just glance down, and my arm's just hanging off. Just hanging off like a zombie, and I'm just looking at it, and I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, yeah, this is not real. And, kind of shake it off and look again and it's just hanging off my arm and I'm like okay then it kicks in like blood like flowing like, like an animal and then I look up and this kid's is holding a shotgun like 10 feet away from me just holding it right at me and I asked him I said like did you shoot me and he just not even with the threw a hole in my hand chest hand like this big so that after that I just dropped to my knees I lost all my air I couldn't see I remember like being on my like you know on my hands and knees and I felt the barrel of the gun on my head. I felt this barrel just shaking still on my head and so I smacked it away. But it was a shotgun so it strayed. So it still like hit me in the head really so, good, like, but it So like if he did not push the gun away from his head, he would have gone dead. straight through the yeah. But it just grazed the top of him. Well it was a shotgun, so like it Yeah. Like he's, yeah. It didn't blow my head off like a watermelon, just to pieces. So after that, I got a little sight, and I was like, okay, I'm still moving. Like, I don't know what's going on with my head, but I know I'm alive. And I remember I looked up, and he was just staring at me. And he took the butt of the gun and, like, smashed me in the face with it. Knocks my teeth out. Like, I fall back, but I can still see at this point, And I don't understand, like, how I can see, because I have so much damage to, like, my That's lung and heart. I felt, like, these hands, like, in my pocket, digging for my car keys. Like, when he's trying to grab my keys, like, I ended up on my stomach. And I look up, and I see my Jeep commander driving away. Just driving away, flying away. And I said, okay, well, either I stay, lay down in this spot right here and die, or I try to get up. So I try to push myself up, but, like, take my left arm, take it right out so gunshot to the chest bigger than a soup bowl and then my head all mashed up and I'm trying to push myself off the ground I kept trying and trying and I'm like all right you know what one more I'm gonna try it one more time and I pushed up and then I out of nowhere I felt these arms from underneath me pick me up and I remember like swinging trying to grab someone and there was no one around dude that's like an angel As an angel man. And I was just like standing up still like a, like you know like a drunk like you know zombie just like and I got this like like a shove like someone shoved me from behind to go forward about seven eight feet and I just fell straight down because I remember I hit the ground like on my stomach I'm like all right well I went as far as I could this shit's hurting like too much like let me just close my eyes and start relaxing sure enough I closed my eyes and all the pain started going away and then I wake up real fast and be like, this is not right. I just got shot 30 seconds ago. How's the pain stopping? 
And I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. You know, go back to sleep. That's a good feeling when you're sleeping. So I'll pass back out a little bit, and then I'd be, I'd be di like dying. And then I'd wake myself up, like my own voice, third person. Hey, man, get up, man, you're dying. And then like, I did that, and then I heard, hey, hey. And I like started hearing this guy, and he's like running over to me. So when I fell, there was a, like a probation officer at a stoplight, and he seen me fall out of the woods, like all bloody broad daylight. And then I felt his hand on my back, like, hey, man, you're fine, don't. Don't, don't close your eyes, you know, come on, the ambulance is coming, they're coming. And I'm like, man, like, I just want to sleep, leave me alone, man. But then in my head, I'm like, no, you don't, because if you fall asleep, you're sleeping forever. And I remember, like, getting on the stretcher, and they're putting me in the stretcher, and just, like, the, the facial expression of the paramedic was just, like, just a stunned look on his face, but in the same time telling me I looked great. I looked beautiful, like, you're going to be fine. And then it just, like, blacked out, and I went to, like, a... Like I was outside of the ambulance on my skateboard, filming it, like rolling telephoto filming of the ambulance and the doors open, everyone's panicking and I see my legs coming out and like once it gets to my head, blacked out. I was pronounced dead on arrival right there. John Doe had nothing on me. They said, you know, Doc, this, this kid's, you know, gone and Doc said no. Ah, I, you know, I'm here, let me try, let me try. The doctor literally said, he was DOA, mm -hmm. okay? And I was just like, no. Like, let me try to fix this. Like, I'm... No, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Even if it doesn't work, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. What if he didn't try? But if, what if he did Ah! Okay. Like, when I was pronounced dead on arrival, like throw him in the body bag he's dead like the doctor said no like you know I'm gonna try to help him this man doesn't know who I am he could have said yeah he's dead all right I'm going back home he said no like I feel something I'm, I'm gonna try did the heart surgery gave me 24 hours to you know see if I was still breathing on the ventilator after 24 hours I was still alive they fixed my arm and my head and I woke up three days later I remember like waking up and it was still all white, like white everywhere. And I'm like, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm 17, I'm dead. And then it starts to like come in and it's like, I see curtains, like a, like a freaking oxygen tank. And I'm like, like starting. And then out of nowhere, bam, perfect vision again. I'm in a hospital and I'm, then I'm like tied down to the bed because I got the breathing tube in me. I got this thing pumping air into my lungs. So I start freaking out. There was a nurse there the whole time though. I didn't even notice her because I was all tied down and I just hear screaming like, he's awake, he's awake. And I see her like running out of the room and then like running back like three more nurses and the doctor, just this woman just. I need another Q-tip. I forgot we were reacting for a second. I was so in, in to that video. I literally forgot that the camera was going. And she's back. Let's hit play. Coming around the corner, flying, like throws her clipboard in the air, runs up to me. Oh my God, you look beautiful. Like, and in my head, I'm like, what do you mean? I look beautiful. I can't even, what's, what's going on? Like, am I tied down? And then she's like, all right, one, two. And like on two, she pulled that thing out of my throat, man. I got like, I got to breathe again, like real air. Like, ah! you know, of course I coughed up a ball of tar and BBs, but everyone was just looking at me like, you're you're alive, like you're you're breathing. <clears throat> I'm gonna make this as short as possible. When I was like seven, my cousin was like five, and or four. I think I was like six, and he was four. And he fell in a pool at a family party, and he drowned. And one of my other cousins walked up to my aunt, and was like, "Hey, like, can Michael breathe underwater?" Because we're all like young. And she's like, "What? No." And he, whatever. They ended up saving him. He was dead, and they were doing CPR. He was like blue and everything. And when he, when he woke up, I like was young and I asked him, I was like, what did it feel like when, or one of my other cousins asked him, but we were all together and he was like, what did it feel like when you woke up? And he was like, I just remember like gasping for the biggest like breath of air. And then he's like, and then I just started coughing up water. And he's like, I, he, we were, he was like four and he was like, I felt like a fire breathing dragon. Like my throat literally has never burned so bad. He's like, I just started coughing up. Like, and he's like, I just remember being like, Ugh! and just starting uh, cough. That's crazy.
It's the second time I've heard that exact. That's insane. That's insane. I didn't know. My actual, my actual, cut, like blood, like my grandpa's sister's son, like Bob Bob's sister's son, like my actual, not my actual cousin. <laughs> yeah, this bitch has a lot of cousins. Eating on your own right now, like, what's your name? I don't know. What year is it? What? Who's the president? Huh? Is there any way we could contact anyone you know with a phone number? I was like, two. I know. Did you hear what he said though? He couldn't answer the day, the month, the year, and he's like, the doctor is like, any any, any phone number. He just spits out his mom's phone number. And this it's been three days, and his parents don't. F his mom doesn't know. Probably put out a report. Out of anything, my name, anything. The only thing I remembered after that was my father's phone number. Or dad, yeah. For three days, my family didn't know. My father was outside, like spraying out the garage, and he got the phone call from the hospital saying, I think we got your son. He's been shot, but he's alive. So, I don't know how my parents had it. I don't know how that feels. Like, you're a father. Like, so, I don't know. It chokes me up because, like, it's crazy, but they came down there, and I remember, like, I see my mom come in and my dad, and I'm looking at him, I was like, Mom, you can't get mad at me right now. She's like, Mad? You're alive! You're alive! After like the fourth day, they were like, Alright, get up, you know, start walking, like, let's go. I'm like, Let's go where? He's like, You're going home tomorrow. I'm like, It's been five days. He's like, Dude, you're going home. What do you want to live in a hospital? Or you want to go live your life again? I'm like, Sir, I got a hole in my chest the size of a teacup. He's like, Listen, Ross, I'll give you a tip of advice. You live through this. You're gonna be okay. Just go home, live your life, don't hang out with. Do you see how freaking high up he was shot? Like, he, homie wasn't just shot in like the abdomen, like. Right here. That's your lungs. You go up like. That's your heart. Dude, do you see the shrapnel on his chest? The x ray? Yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah, you could see it in his lungs. These kids anymore. After five days, they sent me home. So like, I, I'm shot, you know? My parents are asking me questions. My dad's asking what are we gonna do about it? And I'm like telling him, like, Dad, I know who did it, you know? The next day, like, out of a movie, like, these men in suits came in. And my dad's like, yeah, can I help you? And they pull out their, you know, badges and the FBI, you know? They say the kid's name. And I'm like, yeah, I know him, that's who shot me. He's like, oh, could you identify him through a picture? I was like, of course. Pull out a picture of the kid. He said, that's him right there. He said, Ross, we have him in custody. I said, how? I just woke up like two days. That's the part I was talking about at the end of the last one. Okay. Okay, just wait, just wait. Days ago, I just learned how my name again, like how to talk. He's like, the day Blank shot you, he called Blank and told him. So this kid shoots me. And calls his buddy and says, hey, I shot Ross, he's dead. The kid's like, no, you didn't, you're lying. Because imagine another 15-year-old kid saying to a 15-year-old kid, you know? So after they hang up, the kid he told calls the police on him. And he was met by the SWAT team right at his front yard. Got him. And, like, all I had to do was go to court and testify against him. I went in there, man. And so the dude... He was gonna, the dude that was like, all you have to do is kill an innocent dude. He, once he kill, once he shoots him, he calls him back, that dude, and he's like, hey, I shot him, like, we're good. And he's like, hey, be quiet about it. Hangs up, calls fucking the police, and SWAT is waiting for the dude. Huh? <clears throat> In a wheelchair, head still stapled. Nope. See, you know what? That's a own story in itself. Yeah. About like these guys that are no good say, hey, you kill a guy, you can kick it with us. Right. And guess what? He kills a guy. He's like, let me tell you right now, a true friend ain't gonna make you do shit. That's illegal. It's not a friend, though. It's not a friend. Yeah. That's it's, what I'm, that's, I'm saying. Day. A true friend, yeah. like, if somebody's really your friend, they would never ask you to do that. Duh. I would. Mm. If. Honestly, even if you were my true friend, like, I wouldn't do it. I'm not Yeah, stupid. well, yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. 
So this dude, he goes and what? Let's SWAT team right at his front yard. Got him. And like all I had to do was go to court and testify against him. I went in there, man, in a wheelchair, head still stapled, no teeth, 105 pounds because of all the blood I lost, arm cast, and I sat in front of 40 of his family and him, and he couldn't look me in the eye. He had his head down the whole time, and I had to tell my story like this to everyone. That was the first one. I had to go back. To final sentencing, and that's when I was healed. Like so, I I walked back in the courtroom the second time. He comes out in a purple suit, top hat, cane, and sunglasses. This is a full-on suit, a cane, like he's some like pimp or what? Like